Hey guys, thanks for joining our first official live. Brian is naturally on his phone because he just came into Wi-Fi. Yeah. But today we're going to go over this uh, Prusa SL1. It's a resin printer. It is not the cheapest on the market, but it's probably one of the most fully featured one uh, out there. So we also have the washing, the CW one, and we're going to open that and show off that. So you, you resin print in this printer and then this one will wash it and then it will also uh, cure it with some UV light. So they do come from the factory with the black wrapping on it. I want to show you that. And then when you unwrap it, it comes in a box like this. So I bought the kit, they came together and you assemble the whole thing. And uh, they do sell it where it's not the kit, it's already fully assembled, but you spend more money for that. So I didn't want to do that. I did purchase this, this was not given to me. So hopefully our review is less biased. <laughs> so Brian, if you want to open that up and we'll see what's inside. Oh, you gotta push the button. Oh, you got it. I'm gonna adjust the camera because Brian's head is cut off. Sorry. And I only have one microphone that will work, so hopefully you can hear us. Working on the camera here. A little more level. All right. Oh, good. Awesome. So those are our two machines. And we have a live chat on the side. If you want to ask questions during this, please hit that up live chat. We'll answer what we can. So our plan is to open and assemble the SL1 printer first and get that fully going to where it's printing because the print will take about an hour or so. And once this is printing, we'll open the washer and wash it. One thing I forgot is I don't have isopropyl alcohol. I needed like a gallon to fill that up to wash. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Maybe I'll go run and get some. <laughs> Maybe we'll run and get some. So let's check this out. Um, again, this is our first live, so I'm gonna. I have a camera above us. I don't know if I can change that within YouTube. Uh, we'll see as we go, but. Brian, you want to start opening it up and angle yes, it? Yes, please. Angle it to the camera so everyone can see what is right going here. on. Be good. <laughs> angle it to the camera. And I will try to answer these questions. Okay. Davey P. So at the start of the build, what is your ex exception ah. expectation of time required? I think we should compare how long it really took at the end. I have watched some other people do this before, and uh, it took them maybe an hour and a half, two hours to get it fully assembled. Uh, they were explaining it, so I'm hoping that we're within two hours. <laughs> the first of the box, this has all the accessories. Mine says additional orders here. I did order some lubricant for my other, I have the Prusa i3, so they put it in here. I, I cheated and opened this box and got it out earlier. <laughs> so I do know what's inside this. I haven't opened it. Open yeah, open it, open it up. <coughs> As always, we get the 3D printed handbook and this one's for the SLA printer and the assembly instructions. Inside this, I know, be careful not to bend it, there is some FEP foil. This is a consumable part that you'll have to eventually buy. But this, I believe this goes under the resin table uh, that holds all the resin and the light shines through underneath. Oh, is that why and it's this, transparent? Yeah. Okay. So it's a special kind of film we'll have to put on later, so I'm gonna set that to the side. Okay. Got an MSDS, material safety data sheet. That's good. Yes. Yes. Always awesome. So this does come with resin. Comes with half, what, 500, uh, 500 grams. 500 grams. 480 milliliters. Of resin. That's half of a normal bottle that they sell. 
and it is orange. It's the tough resin. So apparently there's tough resin and casting resin. Tough resin is like the final part. And casting resin, you can make a cast where you can make a mold. No way. Yeah, and then pour it and make repeatable things with that mold. I didn't even know. Well, now you know. So this is the tough resin. That's all I've bought okay. so far. So that's for actual object printing. Object printing, okay. yes. And it's orange. How about that? I did buy along with this. I'll show you and compare. So I bought this during their Black Friday event. So this is the normal size bottles. We got white and azure blue. Azure. Azure. And this is the difference in bottles. This is a sample kit, but a sample mm. kit is still a ton. Yeah. So that's what we got. That's what we'll be trying to print in white and blue and orange. It's like a funnel with a filter. A funnel with a filter. Yeah. This is to refill the bottle, I guess, when you're done. Power cable. Looks like a catch tray for any resin. What do you think? It is what it is. Yeah, you put it around. When you're done with it, you put it around the thing. So if you're spilling your resin, it'll catch. Oh, look at that! Like a cheap, bendy plastic. Yeah, it's not very durable. No, but I guess it doesn't really need to be. Nope. Tools. Got the little. Snips. Tools and pliers. Yeah. Open up the tools and see what's in here. Okay. Spatula? Thought I was done with spatulas, but <laughs> nope. apparently you need a spatula for the resin printer. A snip. Their snips are great. I like their snips. A yellow spatula. Okay. A bunch of Allen keys and a wrench. That's it. That's it in this. Okay. Okay, we got fasteners, gaskets, and a thermal pad. In <coughs> fasteners, gaskets, thermal pad. No, no. Okay. Okay. <coughs> That's really it. That it. These are spares. Okay. This is all the spare stuff. They can That's be a spare ton part. Of spares. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of spare stuff. A lot of spare. So if you screw up or lose a. Gummy bears! <laughs> they always give you these, and you're supposed to eat them and reward yourself every step of the way. I don't like gummy bears, do you? Good, yeah, I'll eat them. And then you're going to eat some Haribo. Actually, no. Golden I, I, I promised I would swear off sweets for the holidays. This so. is a, an exception. Oh, is it? <laughs> gloves. Orange, orange, of course. Orange. Orange, gloves. So orange gloves, naturally. Got a little injector. Syringe. Syringe, yeah. Right. And what the heck is this? Oh, it is a USB. 16 USB. gigabyte 16 gigabyte USB flash drive. USB flash drive. It's tiny. Yeah, it is. But thank you to Prusa to give you something that actually holds files. Because yeah, what what you know, got a printer that had a 512 megabyte. <laughs> very card, very helpful. Which is like. Half of one file. Yeah, very, very helpful. So that's that's the accessories. That's everything in that box. Would you put them all over here? Yeah. Okay. This is a super tiny. I don't know why I'm out of focus up here and it's in focus here. That's good. Well, because you're focused right here. Yeah. I, mean, I can't adjust that little webcam thing. Yeah. But it's a super tiny 16 gig. Oh wow. A data USB. Good night. Three. I would lose that. Yeah, it, it's gonna probably be small. Okay. All right, we're breaking in to let's show it off. Let's put the F camera as you can. Yeah, breaking into layer two here. Should probably start following the assembly directions. You think? Yeah. We could break into layer two. Nice. Uh, do not throw away. The cardboard that comes with the layer. Okay. That is very important, and you're going to use it during assembly. We don't know what any of these parts are, so they are a metal part. Yeah, this is like 
oxidized aluminum, maybe? That's going to be the tray, the actual print surface. Is it? Yeah. So it goes, it'll go upside down. Because okay. the printers print right. upside down like this. And we'll print onto that surface there. So that's as big as your part can be wide and tall. But uh, lengthwise, it can go much further. So it's an aluminum block, essentially. First layer, please note that this layer also includes cardboard, which will be used during the assembly. Don't throw it away. Second layer includes parts for the majority of this chapter. Fasteners for the entire printer are included in the second layer. Keep That's the good. electronics in their bag. This is all, all the accessories yeah. and plugs and some Band. 3D printed parts. Looks like maybe... This is where the exhaust fan will go in. Okay. It's got a filter inside it. Fan housing with a filter. It comes with a filter that's wrapped in a plastic bag. If this is a consumable, I... Suppose I need another one. So mm -hmm. it'd be a charcoal filter to filter out all the smells from the resin. Is that what it is? Uh huh. Yep. Should probably get one of those for our laser. <laughs> it does have an airflow direction, so we'll need to remember. Well, that's good. That for very that. helpful. It goes something like that. This looks like the board. It is the power board. This is the power board, but we're going to leave the electronics in the plastic. So that's what the instruction says. And we always do exactly what the instructions say. And remember, if you're watching and you have the ability, please chat with us. If you want anything answered or any comments, we'll try to answer them. We're no pro. We have no idea what we're doing. Rather, resin printing. This is our first resin printer. We've done a lot of 3D printing with, um, you know, the traditional um, filament printing. But resin printing, this is our first. So this is layer one. I don't know. It's labeled three. It's got a three sticker on it. Yeah. Three? Yeah. It should be on layer two. Really? Yeah. Next one appears to be layer four. What? Pack it in reverse. Is there one below that one? Well, I mean, are the first two layers? No, that's there? its own. Uh, you can, no, that's its own deal. Almost didn't have a Aha. Yep. They're upside down. Oh, are they? Yes. So our, our our layer number two is actually on the bottom. So we're not even. Oh, you busted into this. <laughs> we gotta put all this back. Do we? <laughs> yeah. Wherever it went. We should oh be in layer gosh. two. All right. And they mispackaged our package, I guess. I don't think it really matters. But you don't remember where anything went. No, I don't. Great. So far, so good. <laughs> That's about right. Not our fault. It's not our fault. No. All right. We're, okay, so we're looking for number two right now. Yeah, we're going to go all the way to the bottom. Okay, great. So check your package. They are labeled with a sticker. And ours was stickered number eight. Here's number four. Number four, yeah. They have a little number right here. So check that. I don't know. Where'd you go with these? Just behind you. And then, and then there's another number four. And then two number ones on the bottom. So, awesome. Did we find two or not? Yeah. Well, two was... No, I don't know. Two, is that not it? I don't know. This is labeled one. Okay, two's on the bottom. Okay, so they, <laughs> they totally screwed this up. And they went like accessories three, four, one, two. There's one. So we're at one finally. Oh, this is in this package. 
edge back here. And two is down at the bottom. So check your package first. So, so that makes more sense. There is cardboard. In there. So we're keeping everything in the cardboard is what it says. Okay. But we are pulling it out. Okay. So this metal thing will stay in here. Mm -hmm. All right, so. <laughs> yes. Due to safety reasons, the back plate is rotated during shipping. Aha, because there's an aluminum plate there. Mm. So for their bot, their deal, it looks like we're turning it that way. And then we are looking for package number two. So package number one has these like other big parts in it, but we're not using those right now. Package number two has the things we need. There's a lot of things we need. All right, that's package number two. That's what it looks like. There's a film in here. I, I did pre-read kind of the instructions. There's a film in this thing. You don't want to take off any films or any anything that's covering stuff until it specifically tells you in the, the instructions. So, looks like the that. Yep. So this is the tower, and properly as proper assemble assembly of the tower is super crucial says that very explicitly. So this is the main deal that's going to move everything up and down. It's got this screw and it moves it up and down with that. <laughs> so these two things are, these two pieces are going together. And the motor is actually going in this way. So we have a line. It's kind of the aluminum block is milled out. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's got a big square. A rectangle down here and a little square down there, and it'll line up with this holes in the back somewhat. So it'll be somewhere like that. See the four holes on both parts, which have to match each other. Mm -hmm. Rotate the tower on the back plate and align the hole. So we have six accessories. It's not that. Screws. Here we go. Fastener, fastener. Three bags of fasteners come in this box. The Allen wrenches. Yeah, we'll need those. <coughs> so we got M4 and M8. That's what we're looking for. M4 times 8. Sorry. We need four of those. I think. This has them. The fasteners are a bag within a bag. And they should be life size. You see that matches up. So we're looking for M4. This one. This one or this one. That one. All right, those two are what you need. These are in four by eights. Yeah. Okay. Two four by eight. So what it says, and you're gonna align them in the holes. Don't tighten them yet. Don't tighten them yet. Okay. Push the tower down and to the right to tighten. Right, this way. Mm -hmm. So we're putting the two right there. So this is the most crucial part, what it says. So if it screws up, it's Brian's fault. Because if it's not put on correctly, it will not come out. Most, of course, you handed me the wrong screw. <laughs> That's entirely possible. <laughs> it says if it's not put on correctly, it won't come out. Right. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. 
Well, wouldn't be the first time we made a fair amount of progress and then had to tear it all apart again. Okay, this is really interesting on how we're supposed to tighten these. <clears throat> you, can yeah. tight, you can start tightening it now. You're going to start tightening the first screw, which is the orange one, which will be, this is upside down now. It's going to okay. be the one on the left side. Okay. You're going to push down. I don't know if you mean down this way. I'm guessing. Okay, look at that first try. <laughs> push down and to the right. Down and to the right. That's what it says. Okay. I don't know exactly what that means. Well, if I had three hands, push the tower down useful. and to the right. Well, I can tighten while you okay. push it down and to the right. right. Tighten. Okay, I'm pushing it down and to the right. Okay, I tighten that. All, All right. right. Second the screw on the right. So mm -hmm. now we're doing the next one. And right I'm holding now. it down and to the right. I'm guessing you're still holding it that way. Okay. Continue with the upper row. Take the second pair of M. Four eight screws, and that bag only had two, so that's awesome. Hmm. So it did. So I need to find another bag that has M four eights. It has six in here. Okay. Thicker? That one, yeah. yeah. Thick one, yeah. That one on, and probably that one is the same. All right, so the top two. Yeah. They are way down in here. And can we move the. No. No, that thing's not moving. So inside of here, we got two screws we need to do and repeating what we just did here. Next step is going to be getting the PSU electronics in there, and that's in this little bag. But we are going to use it. So I'm going to go ahead and okay, when do I tighten those? I don't yeah. think it. I don't think it really matters. Now, once these two are done, ensure all four screws are tight and prop. I mean, no waffle is allowed. Then tighten first to the left, then the right screw. So the same way, this okay. one and then that one. Does it say to hold it down or do anything weird? No, it doesn't say any of that. So this is your. I don't know, power regulator, I guess. Takes the power and regulates what it needs, and it's got the power on and off and plug. So we're going to plug that in the next step. Okay. All right, if you can go around like this. Get it in when it's not. If this is off, I'm going to cry. Because mm -hmm. we did take the whole thing apart mm -hmm. and start it over. As soon as I can get it to you. Okay, we'll call that good. All right, so continue using the enclosed cardboard to have the back plate lifted from the desk. <laughs> the reason is that the power. Button on the PSU will be facing down and might get damaged. Ah, so we're going to put it, the little power button is going to go through this little hole here. Mm. So you're going to flip it this way so it needs to be lifted off. That's why you're using the cardboard. It's going to go like that. And then there's three holes. We're going to connect it with M3 by 5. Finding the screws. That's the most fun part. Yeah. We have some in here. Four by five. So all the screws are in separate bags. Always double check your bags. Make sure you don't have any in there. Flat head. That looks right. So we're literally taking them and placing them on the picture. 
because that's the only way you're going to tell if you have the right one. It must be there. That one. There's eight of them, so. And that one. How's that going to? Look how deep they are. Screw them in the back plate. You're going in that way. From the other side. Got oh, it. no, I'm sorry. A lie. Oh. oh. That's the next step. Sorry. <laughs> we take two of them and screw them here. On okay. This side. That makes more sense. My bad. <laughs> I skipped the line. Three by 18 is what hold <laughs> these in. That's going to be over here. I'm totally wrong. Those three are holding the PSU, huh? Got it. <laughs> when we put together the Prusa i3 MK3S, it was about the same. It was a bag of a billion screws. And I definitely put some in wrong and had to use the spares because I couldn't get them out. So it's typical. It just takes a while. Okay. So we're 30 minutes in, just about four minutes shy. So tighten these. And we have three parts connected. So oh, yeah. expectation of two hours. Perfect. <laughs> So they did include a amendum, addendum, is that right? Addendum, addendum to the manual, and oh, it has to do with your craft. <laughs> it's a good thing I looked at this. <laughs> they now include washers for the screws we just put in. No. <laughs> so I wish I would have seen that before. We got there. That's all right. Is that what these are? Yeah, these little... Uh, what are they going They look, look funky. Do they have uh, those little grabby these, ridges Yeah, on there's them. little ridges on these <clears throat> washers. All there's four of those? Two? It might only be this two. Is just the two up in that case? Two in the case for grounding. Yeah. Where was this thing? Where was this? It was in the back. It was in the back. Thank you for finding that. All right. Back out with these. The other revisions uh, have nothing to do with placing them. It just says we change some parts out. Change log. So check your revisions and change log before you do anything. Because we just wasted a step. Maybe your change log won't have that. Yeah. Let's hope not. Now don't strip out my bolts. Um, they're out. Um, do you have some needle nose pliers? Yeah. <clears throat> Let it reach. It's funny to hear that delay. All right. All right. Take two. Take two. We got the washers on. They're like a barbed wire washer. Yeah. That's supposed to improve grounding. They're spacers, essentially. The tricky part is going to be sinking these things down in there without having it fall off as I get it there. Oh, did not expect to get that on the first try.
All right, write your guess for how long this is going to take us in the comments on the side. And okay. the winner will get something printed for them. <laughs> All right, now we take those two or the two little ones. Were they these? M M three fives, right? You say yes. Yes. Yeah. You put them in these two holes. All right. Over here. You don't sink them all the way because we're going to attach something to it later. Okay. Two to three turns are enough. We'll slide a sheet on it later, so don't tighten them. Make sure each screw is perpendicular to the back plate in both axes. All right. Our next step. And it, it did say that this had the bolts for all the printers, so that's everything in the printer we need. Good. Next step looks like we're using a plate. We're going to use the bottom plate, which is this. And there's only one other thing in one. And then we use two bars. I have to find these guys. This is on plate three. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> and then adjustable feet. Before we connect the bottom plate to the rest of the printer, let's find the groove, which will be used to align both parts together. You're gonna to be putting it down here. Where there's a groove that's gonna connect. There's a little lip on mm -hmm. this side, and I believe go along there. it's gonna go along the bottom. Okay. And line up with the holes down there. Okay. Probably have to pick it up and lift it off like that, something like that. That looks right. Yep. 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 All right. All so right. that's the groove. You need eight three by eight screws. Ooh. We do not have to hit these screws and make them lose I don't know where they are. are. Go to this one step. I want to see four. Well, we're putting other things on, okay. but we need eight of them. Okay. I'll get the feet. <coughs> Where are the feet? In box two. Box two in the bag. Three by eights. The feet are like a soft, Squishy rubber. Don't install any foot before being told to. You'll block yourself access to some screws. Secure both parts together using four screws. That was four. Yeah, we just need four for now. Okay. <coughs> uh, I'm going to cross thread it. I know it. It's going to happen. Well, with that attitude. <laughs> Should make sure that no cable is pinched. <laughs> that are the one cable no, that's connected. Uh, This way, so you can see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we gotta lift it up, and it's in the groove, <laughs> and now we're just connecting these. And right now, I'm wishing I could fast forward time to where it's already made. <laughs> and if you're watching this later on in the video, you're welcome if you can do that. Watch it made, turn on, printing something. All right. 
fourth one, just about in. All right, then we got these two bars. <coughs> Before you mount this part, please take a closer look at the bottom plate, which has two special grooves for supports. So it looks like right here. <coughs> so on the bottom of the plate, we got two grooves right here and here. And these supports has two holes on either side. We're going to be putting those in there with some screws. And... <laughs> Which direction? I'm looking. Okay. Counter sunk. Each support has two screws. The counter sunk from one side it has to be facing outwards from the printer. These? Yeah. Outwards. So the counter sink, it's going to be the bigger hole, it's going to yeah. be facing outwards. All right. And I'm going to say put the, the, the little label down towards the base yeah. plate. This yep. appears to be right set up. Okay. okay. And then you use you these two. to put them in. Come in at the bottom. Something like the feel, feel of aluminum in your hands. Indeed. Something made from aluminum just feels high class. Blue Knight takes an hour and 48 minutes. And Shorty says this is like watching paint dry. <laughs> that is true. Yep. It does kind of suck, but it's a necessary evil and saves a tremendous amount of money from a kit. So. Do you know how much it was fully assembled? Uh, I think it was $500 more. Something like that. Wow. Yeah. Very expensive. So my kit cost 1700 just around there for both machines. If you buy them together, you get a discount. <clears throat> Very PSU cable. Cables look a little different. Power panic. While well, he's doing that, I'll get these cables out. So bring in this one. And I'm guessing that one. All right, get them in. No, get a tight. Just bother you. Yes. Yeah, I go closer now. Let me see. You the one. That's why you just didn't tighten it enough. Oh. Tighten it like a man. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> or woman in this day and age. Well. You were like, yeah, don't cross-thread them. And so now I'm all freaking out over cross-threading them. <laughs> and right. resistance. Your feet are going to go. Oh, no, don't do it. In these little holes right here. And that's why you didn't want to put the feet in first. Because you would cover up the holes that we just made. Looks like I'm silly to it. <clears throat> put those feet in there. Uh -huh. Screw the adjustable feet all the way in. Now you can place the printer on its feet and remove the cardboard. Yay. However, keep it for later use. Who would have thought that this piece of cardboard would okay, be so we... valuable? Um, yeah. The, uh, they got the packaging out of order, but the cardboard itself apparently is very useful. All right. So the next step, we're going to get the power panic cable. And that is what I am holding here. It looks like it's blue and white, but it's actually black and white. So the box 
I know the picture is a little off. And then we're going to get the power cable, which is what I'm holding here. It's got the big green ends on it. And we're going to plug these things in. So, we're plugging them in too. There is, oh, okay, there's a board on the side here. So, both of these plugs are exactly the same. So this one will plug down here on the green below. And this one, both ends are the same. It'll plug in right here. And they just plug in. And we're running the cables. All these cables are going down along the back side, and these are tied up. Mm. So we'll untie that. So kind of go like that. <laughs> what kind of material can you use in this one? This one is a resin printer, so it's going to be way, way higher quality than a regular. 3D printer. No print lines. All right, next we need the tilt motor, optical sensor. Okay, a bunch of things that are somewhere. <laughs> this thing. It's in box two. Tilt motor. We need a motor. It's the motor holder. Optical sensor, which is probably in this plastic. This little chip, 3D printed part. You need a connecting rod. Looks like it would be that part. I'll hold the motor on. Is that it? Four pieces? That's four pieces. Okay. <laughs> the connectors of the optical sensor cable differ in wiring. Make sure you follow the instructions and connect it correctly. The side marked with a red arrow must be connected to the optical sensor. I should probably get that cable. It's a box bag too. Okay, one end has a yellow thingy on it, and the other end doesn't, and the other end is the one that's going to get plugged into the deal. I guess we'll do that later. And we need... Have we got any gummy bears yet? No. None? No, we're not even close to a gummy bear thing yet. we got a ways to go. Okay. All right, we need four M310. <clears throat> the M310? That's a 10B. 10B. M310. They do not have that wedge shape head. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Here's one. I need one. I'm gonna... Four of those. Okay. So we need two four by eight M. <laughs> Four by eights. Please. Nope. Okay. Uh, we have any four by eights. These are four by tens. So four by eights in here. Yes. Four by eight. Four by eight. Then you need two three by fives. These other ones. All right. So we're gonna check the tilt motor holding. This little thing has two little teeny screws at the bottom of it. We're gonna mount this thing like that. Prongs out. Prongs out, and you're going to use the tiniest screws. Okay. Don't tighten the screws. We need to adjust the position of the sensor. Uh, 
Then we're going to take that and mount it onto the motor after we take the rubber band off. Okay, they're not tightened. That's fine. So our flight going like this, we're going in the same direction as the cable is going. Okay. And you're gonna use the four of those mm -hmm. in there. I think you just tighten those as far as you can. Okay. My work table. My work table is a saw stop table saw. It's just the right height and it has a plastic over it and it was wide enough, so that's what we're using. If you're just joining us, we're assembling the SL1 resin printer. There's a lot of tiny parts, so probably about an hour to look a whole lot more like something, and you can watch it print. So, and if you're watching this later on after it's live, you can skip ahead and get to the fun part. But if you're watching this and you just bought it yourself, or you got it on order because it takes a little while to get to you, it does come DHL, <laughs> and it takes about three, three to four days to get from. You to the United States. So, all right, so we got everything connected here. We're going to take this piece, I put this on the motor. It does. It's just going in a circle, even though this thing is not a circle. It'll make a circle, but it won't be concentric. I don't know, just tilts it. Interesting. Mm. So we slide that connection on the motor shaft and align it with the top of the shaft. Make sure the orientation is like it in the picture. And it is. Align the connecting rod with the protrusion on the holder. Both surfaces should be flush. Tighten the grub shoe. So this goes out like that. Oh, it goes through the slot on this little sensor. Okay. Yeah, I see. It's just tighten the grub screw, but I don't see one. What's a grub screw? Oh, this back here. Oh, that's a grub screw. So we need screw. the Allen wrench. Looks like a tiny one. <clears throat> Put it in and tighten. Well, now I know what those things are called. Mm -hmm. Okay, just going the way in there. Yeah, it's going to push against the pin. Right. And it, oh, actually, it should line up. Hold on. This, I want the grub screw to go on the flat part of the uh. motor shaft. There we go. Okay. So that's how it goes. So it doesn't want you to line this pin until you know that you're going to make it through that sensor yep. there. Yep. <coughs> All right, that's it for that part. Before we install the assembly of the printer, let's find the correct mounting spot. There's a groove in the printer's bottom plate. Insert <coughs> the two. M48 screws in the tilt motor holder. Yep. There's a groove there. I 
and you are inserting this. This way. Are you sure? I am following the picture. Okay. <laughs> and those two go in there and hold it down. Oh, well, that's going to be fun. They're rounded on the bottom yeah. to be able to go at. Is that why they're shaped like that? Yep. So you don't have to go exactly straight. <clears throat> These are a little odd to go in. Yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Chop. So we need to tighten these. A good time. <coughs> Make sure that arm can free flow before you tighten it. You might as well stick the arm in there. Make sure it's. Oh yeah, in the channel. You super suck at that. You know what? <laughs> when there's a big swing arm in the way. Yeah, I suck at this. Don't go too hard because that's a 3D printed okay. part. We don't want to snap it. And then I'll cry. We're gonna make sure the arm flows through the sensor it's, slot. Okay, now it's it's hitting something. Okay, now it's not. Do you want like this contacting something? No. And then this cable will this get plugged. This thing is a little jiggly. Yeah, it's just how it is. Okay. This cable will get plugged in. Remember, <clears throat> to plug it in the correct way. With the tab up and the non-yellow tag sign cable on there. I cannot put it in at all. What? What? I'm sure it's a scale because it does not seem to fit. Break these leads off. Oh, oh, there it goes. Okay, that's a tricky cable to get in. <clears throat> Cables all the way in. We're now going to use the. This is called the reflector. We got a reflector, and we need two four by five screws. Four by five. Not see anywhere. Oh, there we go. That one. All right, we got the two four by fives. There is protective film in here. Do not take it out. Place the reflector inside. Both sides are pretty much exactly the same. This little knob is going to be towards the front. Goes in like this. We're going to attach that to the bottom plate. So Blue Knight says, seems like everybody who has a CNC ends up getting a 3D printer. I'm going to say, because that's basically exactly what they are. All the parts are almost exactly the same to where you have some machines that actually do both 3D print and, what's that? 
3D print and laser and CNC, like the Snapmaker machine I have. So they're just super similar. There's our reflector. And we're not peeling off the protective film until the last chapter. All right, now we need the blower fan, the little blower fan holder, blower, and the blower gasket. Blower fan gasket. Looks like it's here. There's an inside and an outside. This is the last part of number two. So we're finished with box number two. It's ironic because we still have something in uh, part number one. Now this blower is huge. Look at that. That's wow. a huge fan. Yeah. So we're going to be mounting this somewhat like this somehow. And we have a gasket. And then we need the fan holders, which I don't see. Uh oh. Oh, that was in the <laughs> that was in the part that we it's in box number three that we took out because we thought it was not box number three. <laughs> And we need the fan holder. Looks like that. There should be one more. Is there another one of those in here? Please? Yeah, I want to see the one. Right blower fan, blower fan holder. Oh, no, there's only one. Okay. They're just showing me an old version and a new version. Uh -huh. Okay. That's it. All right, we need those screws. We're getting there. What all of these screws? Yep. In three twenty four. While you do that, I'll put this gasket on. Okay. So the gasket comes. A union person and one not union person. Oh. The gasket comes like that. You take this thing out. I'm going to put a gasket on the front of the fan right here. Put the glue facing down. Just like that. Now we're going to press it all around. <clears throat> Did you find your screws yet? I didn't see. We any. have the new blower fan holder. So which which ones did you grab? So far, the M320Rs. Okay, we don't have M510Rs. Oh, that's good to know. Okay, that's the old it. blower fan. Oh, okay. Holder. So we're looking at the M3 yellow M310B. M3 so in this step, you can have a new blower fan or old blower fan. And I have the new one It's because it just shipped out to me. So the printing area of this one, I'll tell you in a second. Looking it up. It's not huge. Uh, 25 by 21 by 21. So 9.84 inches by 8.3 inches by 8.3 inches. No, I'm looking at the wrong one. That's totally wrong. That's the original printer. Uh, the SL1, here we go. <laughs> 4.7 inches by 2.6 inches by 5.9 inches. I'll copy that so everybody can see. 
post it in the chat here. There we go. You need to make sure that no part of the gasket is interfering with the spinning. So I'm just spinning it with my finger. It's not. Brian's got all that. All right. So we're going to take this holder and the fan is got these cable. And we're going to stick it through the hole it has. <laughs> and it's got these two pins where the fan will slide down mm. onto Lexo. Mm. Those pins are on. Lexo thought I said threaded something. shaft. Try to push and ensure the fan is always level. It is. Secure the fan with the M3020R. The long ones. M3020R. M3, 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 sorry. So you put the long ones in there, and if you want to tighten those. And the next page is for the older one. Another CNC live stream in the future. I do definitely, this year is going to come a new. A lot of CNC stuff will come. So keep an eye out for that. This is the first live other than that one random live I just did with my phone. So keep an eye out and maybe I'll get a little better with a little better quality. I don't know why. Only in focus is that and I can't adjust it so weird. But, oh well. So this Probably be a depth of field setting somewhere. Yeah, I don't don't know. It's a fixed camera, so this has two. The fan shroud has two little slots for these nuts to get buried in. Can you get me a tiny. No. Oh. Push the nuts in into a line them, you get the little Allen wrench. Mm -hmm. It's a trick I learned on the other printer. <sighs> this one sucks. Mm -hmm. There it goes. All right, it's aligned. <coughs> All right, so <coughs> it's going to go this way because that's where our holes are on the back. Mm -hmm. So it's got a little lip, it'll fit in. Go right there. I'm going to guess it's going to be the smaller ones. Maybe take a look. M310B. Countersunk screw yellow. Huh? Please. Not the shortest ones. You sure? M310B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. It's the only. Flush head screw in that box in 310B. No, I lie. Don't no. put them in. It's these, they just don't even say it. Oh, here it is M35. Nah. <laughs> Thank you, Blue Knight. I appreciate it. Holiday is tough to get a lot of videos in. I see a tougher one. Brian does things off. You're Center. welcome. Look at this. Not even straight. <clears throat> That's what I mean. Mine was going in at an angle. We had the wrong. Here. Feels. The wrong one. Screws? No, we had the wrong Allen wrench. So what I'm not understanding yet, hopefully I will, is that there is different resins, and there is an ABS resin. Oh. So we can print ABS. Okay. <laughs> That's yes, not please. Good. All right, now we're gonna attach it to the deal. <laughs> uh, let's see. We're attaching it to that side, the far side. Okay. From us. And. 
and it is basically going like that. And it's going into the two oh, okay. with these. The top it's two. It's going to go on the inside. Right here. And it's going in the middle two. The middle two. That's why they're... Okay. <coughs> oh, because they were different sizes than the top and the bottom. Flip the cable from the fan inside the printer. First guide it along. Guide it between the fan and the reflector. So the fan cable will go along with all these other ones. Mm -hmm. Like that. All right. Hey, we are now going to finish off box number one. Yeah. And we got the lid, the top part. Oh, that has a thing on it. And that is the end of box number one. So box number one and two are done. <laughs> Resin sensor cable. That's this cable. That's the last of that cable. All right. We need an M46R screw and an M4 serrated lock washer. Brian looking scraggly as ever by Jack Henderson. You inspired me. <laughs> inspired. Inspired by Jack. What'd you say, M46R? M46R screw. Oh, it's hiding down there. Round head. Just one of those. Oh, and just an one. M4W serrated lock okay, washer. Wait, where does this go? But we don't know yet. Oh. Not, not okay. using it yet. Well, that's the first thing. Uh, the serrated lock washer. Mm -hmm. Is that like two of those? Because we're supposed to have one more. Or did we use the wrong washers? No. What's it, what's it called? Oh, no. We're only supposed to use one washer and not two on those two bolts. You gotta be freaking kidding me! <laughs> Which one? Oh my gosh. I don't know. Turn it over and take it. Wait a minute, wait. Okay, that's the stepper motor. So the one on the right. Yeah. So the one on the left. Needs to come off. Is coming out. Okay. Well do we need to back onto the cardboard when we do that? Yeah. Uh, I would say so. Honestly, the power, the power supply. Yeah. Oh, jeez. No big. Oh crap! It's all the way down here. No, the other one. Over here. I don't have that. It needs to be that one. This one. Oh, oh my gosh! I just really want us to get familiar with this. Uh, I guess. Change log. Here's two of them. They look exactly alike and match exactly the two screws in there, but only use the one on the right and save the other one for later. They go digging that out. Okay. okay. You good? Done. You tighten them back in? Yes. Okay. That no wasn't as bad as I thought. Easy peasy. <sighs> All right, we need this thing. Okay, got that. Got that. 
Before you attach the cable, make sure you're using the correct hole. And it is this one. Until I you sure? say I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure. Incorrect holes. Avoid using them. That's literally what it says. That's, is that what it says? Yes. <laughs> Avoid using incorrect holes. <laughs> either being really funny or their English is bad. <laughs> Attaching this little cable here. <clears throat> That's that step. All right, we got. One Nylock Launcher M3N. <coughs> we need one of these. M3W washer should be this. Eight M38. No, there's only two over there. We're gonna have to find them throughout all of them, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one has the most. Sixteen. One, two. Three. See if they're all the same size. Yeah. So I think. There was one that was awfully close, but not quite as long. It's not enough of them. You can grab them from the wrong bag. Six. So the two others Maybe from that bag, there. maybe. Maybe this one. Seven. Eight. All right. And the tilt assembly. I don't know what that is. I'm guessing it's this purple thing. <clears throat> First, make sure the cantilever is close to the top of the tower. This? Oh, this. This thing. I don't know. Either way, this is going into here and sliding into this. Ah. Stop. And this will all go. Am I wrong? Does that pull it like that? Careful. That's how it goes. Oh, there you go. The whole motor pulls up. Duh. I do. Let it go like that. Okay. This will tilt it, tilt this whole bed on like a spring. For what purpose? It tilts it so the resin washes off. It's kind of like a mixer, so it keeps the resin moving inside. Really? That's one of the features that this has that others don't. So like a little motorized cement mixer? Yeah, kind of like that. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> yep. When you get uh -oh. this one together, can you just about 3D print one, right? <laughs> hey, something just fell out. Uh, that went on this little. Uh, did it? There's one on the end of that. Looks like it would have gone on here. Oh, was it just keeping a couple of them together? I don't really know. This is just bent weird. No, oh, it's just a spacer. Well, it's telling you which side of the cable you need to be plugged um, in. Well, it just fell right there all of a sudden. Awesome. I don't know where it came from. All right. So we put this little washer and nut on this arm, which is impossible to show you. I can see it from down here. I'm not even looking. I'm just feeling. Oh, uh, you're doing good. No, 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 you got it off. Okay, now you're good. All right, start turning it. Yeah, there you go. No, you know, it's not straight. No. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is tiny. <clears throat> there we go. Oh, good. I'm assuming that washer went there. I don't really know. You don't really know? No. Well, could you really know, please? Okay, I really know. I look okay. So do we tighten that down or what? Da, 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 da. Carefully tighten the nut to ensure direct contact between both parts. It is recommended to use this, the spanner to hold the nut in an Allen key from the other side. Is this a spanner? I don't know what a spanner is. What the heck's a spanner? I have no idea. You know, Han Solo had a hydro spanner on the Falcon. <laughs> I 
accent away. <laughs> <coughs> Uh, yeah, I'm guessing that's what this is. Small one. Okay. So apparently, this is a spanner in Europe. And... You need to hold this. Which one is it? This one. Right there. I can tighten it. <sighs> Must be a European thing. And you know what? That would make sense because a lot of that original footage they shot in uh, London. Do you know that? No. Yeah. How the heck does this thing tilt? Does it slide it out? Oh. Look at this. Uh -huh. We're hitting something. We're hitting that metal, which is what we need to do. Oh, you mean back here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not coming forward out of there. It's yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's about where it needs to be. You can see this. <clears throat> you want me to tilt it? There. This thing will rotate. And on the inside, yeah, go ahead and lift it up. It'll move this piece down so it'll make the bed tilt and recycle the resin on the inside. So that's what we just connected all together. Hmm. <coughs> that's a spanner in your hand, the wrench, Michael Winman. He knew. Michael knew. He knew all about the spanner. Line the optical sensor according to the silver plate steel. Uh, we're good on that. Let's just want you to tighten the sensor now. Hmm? We already did that. We're we did. good. Oh, okay. you mean this down here? Guess what? What? Treat yourself. Oh, really? Gummy bear. Gummy bear time. Treat yourself to gummy bears. You it's can eat not... two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. What? Thirteen gummy bears, bro. The whole row. Wow, that's, that's <laughs> a lot of gummy bears. Okay, this does not count toward my no sugar for the holidays. Okay. No. No. From now on, please use the lower part of the printer when moving the printer. Avoid using the tower or the cantilever. So don't grab the tower. Okay. Compare this picture to that picture, which it looks correct. Covers and platform. All right. One. Two. <coughs> I don't like gummy bears, so Brian's going to need more. What's not the line? Alright, third layer is going to hold all the parts for this part. You know, the green ones are actually Baby Yoda if you pull their ears sideways. Do you know that? No. Or? I'm going to set this aside. Ooh, that's heavy. Wow. Can yeah. set that on the thing behind us? Because we're not going to use that quite yet. That's so pretty. I guess the inside of the gasket is just a uh, waste part. Really? Yeah, set that behind us too, I guess. Boom. Fourth layer hides a cover, which we will use in this chapter. All right, so. Five parts. Wait, we never used those bolts. Well, I'm assuming it's going in here. Well, you might want to check that. Well, it's a good assumption, trust me. I know what I'm doing. Yes, it is correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Four across the back, two on either side. All right. I'll let you do that as I read ahead. Nope. All right, these are what we need. Oh, there's some things in here. <coughs> I'm cold, so I'm sorry I keep talking. That's okay. 
M3 by 5. We need three of them. <clears throat> so that's six. One, two, three. There are two sheets in this package. Left and right. Learn how to distinguish between them. The left sheet has a hole under the extension nut near the top, so it's got a little long thing. So this one's left, this one's right. Okay. That is locked in where it's supposed to be. Rotate the printer like it's a, a deal. And we want this one. It's like there's grit down in there. Don't mind me as I attach this. Put the left one on first that has that little thingy. <clears throat> Oh, gee. <laughs> oh, thank you. There's a lot of silence right there. <laughs> Some people just can't live with silence. You ever seen Polar Express? No. Went to see it last night at the Rialto for the first time. The kids have Polar Express parties at school, but. Really? It's a pretty amazing movie. I've caught a little bit of it. On Very the imaginative. Just can't get into this it. Number six, I think. Good not library, huh? Okay, there's the left. <clears throat> Seven. Well, this should be the good. Uh, no, we only put we only put one on it. Eh? Okay. We are only putting one up. All right, now we need the sensor parts. Hmm. We both have jobs. I am a exterminator, and Brian <laughs> is a teacher of some grade somewhere. Fifth and sixth grade. Art. He's an art teacher. Art. All right. So we need that piece. That piece. Cable with a button. And a cable with a. Thermistor. Oh, yeah. This plastic piece. It's like a something. Went to something here. I don't know what. We need a zip tie. 
We need a M3 by 5 screw. <coughs> 3 by 5. Just one? Just one. I'll start with a thermistor. This thing with the little metal thing on the end. Mm -hmm. And we're using one of these, and I can't tell which one. Let's see. This one. This is wrapping around. Wrapping the cables around this little piece, which is not easy. Something in there. Is that thermistor actually supposed to be up in it? In yeah. Housing? Some of it. Okay. I need a little wrench to poke the wire in. This is a wrench. What? <laughs> uh, give me the smallest. <clears throat> wrench slash spanner. 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 Okay. Thermistor goes in this little plastic piece like this. You probably can't see because it's so tiny. Cable channel is only at the top. Oh, I put it down maybe a, up, up in it a little too far. Uh oh. Don't do it this way. Shilling us down a little further than uh, I actually have it, so we'll do what it shows. It only tells everything exactly how hot it is. Not a big deal. Okay. All right, then we take the other plug. Will it focus it if it's up? Uh, maybe. Your focus point, no, it won't. Like, right. Yeah, uh, kind of. Okay. There you go. Keeps popping back out. That's where, about where the thermistor needs to be. <laughs> Checking out. <sighs> It does keep popping out. Yep. There we go. All right, so we're going to stick this power plug, put the wires down in that open spot, back, and then this comes in the back. This is far enough as this one? Yes. <laughs> this other one comes in the back after I get this cable pushed in. Grief cable. Like that, and that's the housing. For nice. For the parts. Snap in like that. Okay, so it's going to go on the back of the printer. It's going to get attached. It's going to go through that hole and it's going like that. Really? Which bolt here was the one you just pulled off? I think it was this one. Okay. I think. Maybe not. That doesn't want to do anything. Oh, unless it's sunk way in there. Put it in. Okay. Can't keep his hands on it. All right, the cables will go down through this hole down below, <clears throat> straight down like that. 
Do I have any projects lined up for this? We uh, the Millennium Falcon. Millennium Falcon. Something there. Of course, I really want to make little uh, meeples yeah. of us for our board games. So you're actually Ben wants to actually have little game pieces that look like us. I want to scan my face. In order to do that, yes, that's that's going to be a learning curve. I think. Unless we get people involved. No. Oh, we're good. Okay. <clears throat> Trying to figure it out. I connected power wise, <clears throat> sound wise. Think so. Okay. The batteries are about to die, I think. Well, that's not good. Brought some more out. All right, let's go for the next spot. Zip ties. Take a little zip tie. And zip tie here. And down there. Just near the top, somewhere. No, there's a there's a hole on the side. You'll oh, see there's... it. <clears throat> no need to flip it. Okay, well, you better come make sure I'm doing this right then. Yeah, I don't wish you. Once I clip it, you're okay. going back. Top one right here. Yep. Okay. The bottom one down here. That little inventions for the zip tie to go through to hold these cables along the side. That tight. Yes. All right. What about this one? Is there a third one? Yeah. It only shows two in the picture. Really? Hey. That should three. Hi. Mm Imagine if we did this full time. This was the only way we made money. It'd be amazing. I'd be fine with that, actually. <laughs> okay, how close do I sniff them? Fairly close, but a little bit extra. A little bit? How much? Eighth inch? Quarter inch? Eighth inch. Three inches? Is that possible to make game pieces? Yes, you just need to scan yourself. Um, and when I figure it out, I'll show it on my Instagram or Facebook or whatever. So maybe make a YouTube video about it. So make sure you follow on Instagram. I'm at Myers Woodshop. He's at Fiery Squirrel Art. And you can find us on Instagram and Facebook with that way. All right. Now we need the M3 by 5. Three of those. And this thing. This one will go on this side. Yes. That might be a way. I don't know. M3 by 5. Here's one. Oh, okay. Like three of them. So they're going to go here, here, and here. What about that? There, there, and there is what I meant. Okay, make sure. I'm, I am positive. You can't look at it from the other side when you screw it in. Okay. That's the only places you can actually see. Oh, is it? Yeah. One, two, and at the bottom, three. Okay. <clears throat> Hit that up. Two. Two pages for just connected mountains. Easy. M3 by 5. Probably what it is. Two 
two of those, and three by 10 B. <coughs> Four of those. Getting there. Cleaning pad. Where's that? Oh, it's in spec. We're doing the filter, the filter fan, these two things. This thing, that piece, that piece, filter, this, the fan. All right, so the fan is getting mounted to this piece, like that. <laughs> Press the fan all the way down. That's it for that part. <clears throat> okay. Taking this thing, this is going around the outside. It's a gasket. Cover up the holes. Yeah, nope. I think it's gonna go on this part. Wrong gasket. Are you sure this is the right screw? Yeah. Not going in there. Back it off and try again. I have a couple of dozen. Use the cleaning pad to remove any grease Come from the house. Hey. Get in there! It's going all right, Brian? No, no, it's not. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, gaskets like that. Then this thing is going on like this. Upside down. 310B. Oh, the holes aren't even poked through because I'm coming in this way. Really. Still not all right, Brian? 
I can't tell if it's sinking or cross threaded or what. Don't worry, it was only two thousand dollars. I hope it's the right screw, seriously. Me too. Where is that stand? <clears throat> Three by five. That's what that is. We checked. They were all the same. I thought so. Right there. Okay, great. <clears throat> Trying to get these holes in the gasket. Did you get it? Yeah. Finally! You did not want to sink. <laughs> Prime is having a really hard trouble with one of these screws. Well, they might have machined it wrong or something. Because it was aligned. But it would not sink. And it thought me going in. So, I don't know. Just hope it's the right one and it's never coming out. <laughs> It's probably the only one we're ever going to have to take out. <clears throat> Eating a gummy bear. Eat a gummy bear for that. That was hard work. So we're an hour and 42 minutes in. It's looking like something. Yeah. Ugh. All right, we're done with that part. Gasket's on. Wipe the inner surface of the housing. Avoid touching the surface. We does not want anything in there. Does it? Now it wants me to put this gasket in here. Lots of gaskets for something that isn't doing anything with water and liquid. Just getting the fumes out. All right, and we're going to do an insert down. Gas pollution and solid particle dual filter. Hmm. Fancy. No matter how it goes. Don't want no gas pollution. That way, so that's the way the picture goes. <coughs> All right, mm -hmm. that part is going on there. I'm guessing these two are holding it down. All for a pollution fan. Oh, I need a bigger one, just one size bigger. Here, I'll let you tighten those. Okay. Down. I'll get the next step. Need the filtration hinge. That little piece. The 
piece we need now is in box four. It's a big piece. Excellent. We need two M3N nuts. That little hinge part. Two, three, four, five, six of those. One, two of these. Two locking. <coughs> okay. That's any, oh, rear cable cover. Cable cover and the crown. All right, so this thing goes this way. <clears throat> then you use these. Are you sure on both of them? Yep. Okay. Because they get these. And you can tighten those down. With the spanner. With the spanner. <laughs> the spanner. <clears throat> So after you do that, this will go not hex heads. in there somehow. Oh, is that going to slide in? It is. Cool. Then we got some cable management. This is going to be the back of the top of the printer. <clears throat> back of the top. Ah! Of the printer. Ooh, and then we need a print platform. We're getting close here. Are we? Close. Yeah, close to it. Being close. <laughs> Is it supposed to be at an angle like that? Yes. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Is it supposed to be closer in? Oh, it's got a... Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Is it further away or closer in? Or do, do we leave it loose oh, enough for it to... This goes back and forth. In like that. And then this thing comes down. So do we tighten it once it's there? I think we put this screw this thing in place now. That's what I mean. These little teeny black ones. Okay. 
Yes, good, okay. Data sheets, I don't need those. All right, once those are down, go on the back of this, I'm going to do some cable data management. I need that little screwdriver again. Little screwdriver. Or the little Allen wrench for these oh. over. <laughs> so these things are going down over right here. We're going to slide this. Oh, look at that. Cables. That's going in that thing. You just adjusted focus. Really? Yeah. Two years since you're close to About time. <laughs> And now change again. Let's try it. Does this mean there are eleven people watching? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Uh, All right, the cables go in there. Uh, this thing goes around the back like that. That's cool. Then we got four. Top and bottom on both sides. Uh -huh. Before we go all the way, let me double check the step. Yep. Okay, I'm going to tighten them. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and tighten. Is there a warm up time on this? Uh, I don't know. I'm assuming yes. I think there is. I think I think there is a little, but it's not very long. All right. Always protect the surface of the print platform. So I need something to set it on. Use the electronics bag. This here, and we need the other metal part. <clears throat> and it'll go on to this part. There's the correct orientation of the part. M410. <coughs> uh, the groove, it's talking about the groove in here, needs to be facing away so something can slide in there. Mm -hmm. So we need M410s. Need four and of those. Or I'm use the ones in this bag, I think. This I one. lied. Oh, here's the other one. We need four of them. Okay. Kind of got a silverish to them. Just need that one to be. It does not want to go through that. And that was a little machined off. Tighten those up. All the way. All right, the following steps. We're going to use these pieces. Both of these 3D printed parts. We need a knob. Uh, 
Big knob. This big giant thing. Two of the M425s, which would be these two. And then two of the short ones, four by eight. Okay, we got a problem now. Tell me that thing is not sinking. That one's messed up. I could so, feel it when it was good. Just keep going. Keep that. I mean, I can't. I'm having a hard time turning it at all. Okay, maybe I'll let be a man. Right, man up. Okay. Man up. Four M forty five. So these two bolts are going to go into Huh. It says insert two, but I only have one. What? Look at this. What? This picture shows two hole two holes. Mm, yes. Look at the front of ours. <clears throat> yep, just one of them. One hole. Weird. Oh, your printer might have only one screw. The procedure is the same. Oh, okay. That's what I get for not reading. Read the manual. <clears throat> kind of strange though. We got There's the grease inside log. the hole. We got the better okay. deal so far, but now we got one screw instead of two on the. What is this thing even called? The SL one. No, I mean the. Uh, this part. This thing. Oh, I don't know. lever is that what that is? Okay, so this thing is going up in here. Okay. And then we got two nuts down below from the corners that need to go up in it. Mm hmm This is a funky... Actually, you know what? If you can hold it yep. upside down, it would be way easier. No, the whole... The whole, the whole thing? Okay. Perfect. Isn't that easy? Okay. So for that. Tighten the screw up here later in the calibration process. Oh, okay. So now it says take this thing, take this big nut, and bolt through it. Choices work faster. <laughs> yeah. Put the cover over it. There we go. Okay. Now I can take this platform. And it just slides on like that. 
feels like there should be a way to tighten that, but I don't know. And now it does not work. I feel like I tightened the knob all the way. Did I not? Is it supposed to jiggle like that? Or is that what the uh, one screw is for? Oh, how is this getting tighter when we tighten it? I don't know. Oh, well. oh it's pushing the screw down in the center of it. I see. So the screw is going all the way down and pushing into this plate, okay. and that's making it tight. But yeah, it will wobble. That's normal. Oh, okay. Hard roll time. That's bag. That's time to eat number two. So this is the final check. Like this is the end. So we're coming up to the end. Finally. Woo! Gummies. All right. Compare the look of the assembly for the pictures. Looks just like it. Let's build the upper part. Ooh, look, it's going to look like this now. With a big, clear plastic thing on it. So it says to take this thing off for now. Okay. I'm going to set it to the side, protect it. We'll find the parts in three and four. Okay, we need the cardboard piece and zip ties. Back to the cardboard. Yep. I don't know where that cardboard went. Four zip ties. One, two, three, four. Start on the front side of the printer up there. I'm going to stick the cable in there. We're going to cable manage. I'll do it from over there so we can right. see. Because we're going to manage the cables now. So we're taking this cable and this cable. And they're apparently getting zip tied together. <coughs> At the point of connection. I really don't like these things. They're really good. I don't like the gummy stuff. <clears throat> Can you get me the blue clip, little clippies? I don't know where that went. Maybe hey, it's right underneath you. Oh. Never mind. Okay. Now we're going to work on the side. And all the cables, if you can grab these cables here. I'm all going that way. Right. But I need to get, I need to take these three, four, and zip tie everything here, apparently. This one. Doesn't need to be super tight. Make it a little tighter than it put it in. All right, now we're going to lay it down onto the cardboard again. Okay. So we're going to pull all the cables out down through here. What? 
Uh, once these cables down. Zip tying to this? No, I'm just zip tying. Period. These are too short. Blue one? I feel like one of these is pretty short. So let's see. Oh, what this opening is for on the bottom. Oh, the UV LED. That's what is going down the bottom hole. Is that what that's for? Yep. All right, that's it for that step. Let's scoot it over here. <clears throat> now we got to get the UV LED. A UV light. Do not look directly into it. We need all the little black ones. Looks like a fan to me. Huh? Oh, it's got a fan. There's a light. Push pull. So it's housed up in there. Cable <laughs> with shrinking tube. Guess we have the new one, with the shrinking tube. Is it supposed to come off? It's supposed to. Great. What does that mean? Push and pull. I don't only read. Hold on. These parts. Okay. Okay. Warning. Here you go. Have to remove the cover from the LED. Avoid touching the diodes. Any dirt or grease on the surface might result in printed artifacts. UV LEDs. Protected with a plastic cover to remove it. Oh, push it down, then pull slightly in the indicated direction. I have no idea what that means, but it's starting to come off. So push it, push it. That is weird. Yeah, because it shows push it down and then it pops off. <clears throat> So is it already pushed forward then? And we're just supposed to, yeah. About, yeah, there we go. There you go. All right. 
Oh, so basically you just lift look, it up. There's a couple of slots here. Ah, it fit in the slots. And it was already moved forward. So you want to push it away and then lift it straight up. So it's not going to push all the way across. It's just going to push just a tiny bit and then lift it off. Yeah. But do not touch any of that because I'll cry. So this piece is pretty much trash now, I guess. Just cover. Connect the UV cable, which would be this, to, wait, no, this big end goes up in this piece. Good night. It's not the lock supposed to be on top? It's going to fit in that hole. Yeah, I know, but is it supposed to be this side? My answer is yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Okay, then here we get a little bit of a connector here. This makes it longer, I guess. Connects like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we're going to put it in the bottom. Lay the printer on its side. Before you insert the UV LED printer, insert both cables and align them to the back. Slightly just slide the assembly up and secure it with M35B countersink screws. Those are all the black ones. <coughs> mm -hmm. So we want the cables toward the back, and my back is laying down. But we want to oh. pop them out to the side and still. All right. And this thing is just going to line up like that. Right into the reflector, basically. Yep. And then we need all these little black ones, little black screws. They're going. All of them? Yep. Well, I put a lot of them. I would guess this would be the final step of all of them, but I may not be wrong. Enough to fill up. Did each. you read to see how many? I can tell you. Two, four, six, eight. Oh, around the. Yeah. What do you got? I don't know. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here, you come and do that while I read the next steps. Those, right. those eight in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Next. Ah, that was probably. <clears throat> Might have had no. No audio there for a bit. Oh, did it die? No, I turned it off like Oops. an idiot. No, oh, well. I think I turned it off. I don't really know. It's the first time using this thing. So, all right, now I'm going to get the touch screen assembly. Okay. This will be in the bag label touch screen assembly. Ooh. Ooh so pretty. <laughs> And we need four by ten screws, two of them. M four by ten. Oh. Okay, let's see. Yeah. Peel off the protecting film. It says you can't. <laughs> Check the film. Oh, right off the LCD screen. Nice. Beautiful. Satisfaction. Audio is working fine. Good. Okay. All right. So that is getting mounted upside down. Here. You can move your left, your right hand, Brian. This one is getting mounted here with these screws. I seem too big. Not. Uh, 
Yeah, just gotta put the screws in first, I think. Oh, that's I went in really easy. All the cables are coming out the side again, so. Don't touch the screen. It's got no protective film now. All right. So the e screen's in. And now we're doing. Major electronics. <coughs> we need eight M three by fives. What you mean the electronics we've done so far? That was just for fun. Well, they're different. These are the control boards. Okay. It's a little different. Well, here is where I start freaking out. Oh my gosh. Find me eight three by fives. There is a red sticker on this board. Do not peel it off. It's really big. I read that part. So, so we at least know that. This little piece of blue plastic is a thermal pad. So we need that. Okay. Now this board does have network and Wi-Fi built in, which is pretty nice. So before we do anything, we want to take this and peel off the blue, or peel off the clear on the back. That's the thermal pad. And then we're going to set it down on this overhang. And then we're going to peel the blue off the back. Peeling it? I can't. You're peeling the whole thing off. Careful. It's hard to peel that blue off. All right, and you don't want to touch it. <clears throat> can keep things cool. All right, now we're installing it into the printer. This piece. And I'm going to go on the other side. Off you have that cardboard. All of our electronics are going to be under the piece. I believe it's going to go in. These electronics are back there. Gracious. Go like that. Mm. All right, we need that one. No wire is pinched. I don't think it is. I need the wrench. Stupid. Oh, 
one to the bottom. Oh, I'm hoping to get one yet, though. First. Okay. Let's put all these cables up here. Like this. Careful, don't touch the LEDs. Oh, yeah. Let's get out of your way. Okay. Okay. That's a crazy thing. But we're going to lay it on its side. We're okay without a cardboard piece over here. Because we're going to go down on this and plug all the plugs in. So the first board. So these boards need to be connected first. First? Yep. And they have a little dealio where they fit right in like that. Now they're talking to each other. And then they sit on, if you can move the wires out of my way. Yeah, do this with a friend. <laughs> That is not anywhere close. It needs to go. You like all these wires need to move out of the way. Let's go way down there. So it's resting on that thermal pad. Yeah, but these are lined up back here. They sure are. Yep. Okay. You want to pop the screws in. Oh, jeez. Oh, Where did that go, man? Okay, do it with your fingers. <clears throat> well, I'm trying, but before I get one seated in there, let's so get one per. You get it? Yeah. There we go. Maybe. What the heck? Yeah. This sucks. Okay. Okay. That one's balanced. So this is basically, if you built a PC, this is exactly the same as putting... Oh, geez. Just ruin the board, bro. Yeah. This is what building a PC is like? This is exactly what it's like. Yes. Maybe I should do that someday. Is that what you're going to do when you get a desktop to go right over there? Uh, that's my plan, possibly. Mm -hmm. It's a thought I have. I don't know if I'm actually going to do it. But. Okay. Oh, man. That one in the bottom left corner where all the cables are. Oh, jeez. That sucks. Don't fall off. Fall off. Uh, So close. <clears throat> Let's see yours. It's like open heart surgery. <laughs> that part is no fun. There's no good way to show you what we just did. But it sucks. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, one 
mounted there, 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 there. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. We do not put one there. We don't? Uh uh. Sure looks like one. And there's a spot for one, but. Why not? I don't know. There's actually three. This actually goes down here. <laughs> This screw is probably a little turned. <laughs> it's not tight enough. I think I stripped it out, putting it into at an angle. Check to see if anybody has chatted in anything. Ben, can you creep out my kid and say hi to Caden? Caden! Hi, Caden! I should not have just read that out loud. <laughs> right on. But I did. Oh, well. All right, there's all our board. Now, we plug anything in? No. Yes, we pack cable. Yeah, this is terrible. Colors. All right, now we're plugging everything in. Wherever things go. Messing with the computer, I'll just stop testing. Trying to figure out where this stuff goes. That one goes up like that, the power. Okay. This big one. It's there. All right. Get a blue one and a blue one. Crap. Blue, red, and green. Blue, red, and green. This one has a W on it. W goes in this one. This one has a zero on it. Uh oh. Doesn't go anywhere. W and a T. Missing one. We're missing a cable. We're missing a cable. Yeah. We are missing a cable somewhere. Tilt motor. That would be this one. W. Okay. Power motor, green, there, the W. Do we have a cable with a T on it? A cable with a T on it. Yeah. What do you mean by a T? Cable sitting over here. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I don't know where that cable is. Okay. This sucks. Green is a thermistor. Wow. These pictures are not helpful. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay. Oh. 
is the optical sensor. That's this one. <clears throat> kind of work backwards a little bit. Goes into this one. Okay. We need a black, red, yellow, blue. It's probably this. That's blue. This is the filtration fan. That makes sense. It's there. Then we have a red. Oh, that's the other fan. Green, right below our fan. Okay, the letter U, which is this one, it's here, UV cooling fan, <coughs> and this thing, power panic, let's go upside down. Okay, I have this one. Green is going to be thermistor, two pin. Yes. I don't know why you keep trying all this stuff. <laughs> two pin. When that mono prize comes, you may have to hold <laughs> <laughs> Here. Okay. I am missing wires. I wonder if there's a build video for that sucker. Maybe this wire. Where does this wire go? It's huge. <coughs> <laughs> I'm missing a few wires. <laughs> oh, wait, here's one LCD screen. Which one's that? Be connected in separate steps, so it ain't that one. And this is the Wi Fi cable. So there's something in here that purple isn't going out there. There's something in there that isn't coming out here, I think. Mm -hmm. Which is not good. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Wi-Fi. Oh, here's a little cable. Green. What does this? This is a fan. Cover trigger with this cable. What are you still missing? I don't see anything in here that's. I have a cable Not here that is a fan, and that's something white. It's a little white one. A single cable that is a white button. I don't know where it goes. Is this a speaker? Speaker. That's this one. Speaker. Just as a speaker? Yeah, it'll just be like a just a beep out of beep. Okay. Wi Fi. Blue is the cover trigger. I don't see that. I don't see that cable. <laughs> You're looking for blue?
front USB. Is there a front panel or I'm probably not plugged into? I think this is going to go to the front panel. Mm. I think that's the plan. Okay. Front USB orange. <laughs> it's the covered wire. Yeah, that makes sense. There's going to be one that's blue. Cover trigger. It's probably this. And let's show what it's going here. Okay, I still have one plug and a white wire. So I'm missing something there. You're missing a white wire? That only has two cables coming out of it. Three. This one has two. Black and white. Ah, yeah. Yep. Plugged in the wrong thing there. Okay, what goes here? Filtration fan right below. Yeah, this is a fan. So one is going to a filter and one is going to the right blower. So this one, the filter, where's the filter at? In the back? Here. So that'd be coming from the top. Filter is going to be coming from the top, which is blue. Okay. Okay. I'm good. You got it? I got everything plugged in except for this one white one. This is a ground, I think. Uh, yep. Where's it go off to? It's just split out and go off anywhere. Okay, there's our cables. That was crazy. <clears throat> Ridiculous. Okay, you can peel off the protective cover on the inside of the thing now. The vat thing? <laughs> In the vat, yeah. How exactly? <laughs> That's funny, Michael. Preparing the print display parts. Getting the electronics out. This actually has an LCD screen in it. It's like a 4K screen or something. <coughs> Set that down. Careful with the cable so it doesn't get pinched or bent. Need four fourteen B. Some residue left in there. Hope that doesn't matter. It's just a reflection, so I think it'll be okay. It appears to be the case. <clears throat> coming out from the side like that. Oh geez. It's fine. <laughs> and then we're just screwing these. You can screw all these in.
<clears throat> don't pull off the protective film. I will not. Keep it on. All right, now I need this little printed piece and M3H screws. The LCD printer holder. Ah, this thing gets attached to the board, all the LCD screen. Holy cow, that's tiny. This is going to be crazy. The print display screen is super tiny. Just a push to fit. Hope that's right. Clicked on. Okay. Now we're going to do the LCD connector. Just lift it up and slide in LCD. And close it. Okay. Final check. Check everything's plugged in. Do a final check. That one there. That one there. Okay. I have no fourth one. I am missing one. Four tilt motor T. Missing one. Missing one what? Missing a cable. Uh-oh. It's right there. Oh. Crack. It's too short. Why is it too short? Because of the way they had me do the zip tie. Get my finger in there to get it here. Well, you want me to try? Let me hold it. Yeah, hold this right there. I see it. I need something long to poke it out. long enough of a cable.
Good grief. Alright, always check if you have all the cables plugged in. <laughs> Ta-da! Uh, goodness gracious, that was crazy. Okay. Done. Now I need to zip tie all this stuff together. Oh good, more zip ties. Oh my gosh. Why do you always freak out? Because all that. Just a big mess of crap. Exactly. <clears throat> You missed one. You gonna get that black? Doesn't want that one in there. Oh, okay. Actually, it's supposed to be underneath these two. Probably make more sense. There's no like nice way to put all this cabling. I think I would agree. Like, oh, here's some cables. Zip tie these all up here. My inside does not look as good as their picture. Pretty terrible. Oh well. Okay. All right. Let's put the bottom on. So this will plug in. Of that. Hmm. It's a plug behind this power cord. Plug that wire in that went to nowhere. And then I'm just gonna try to shove everything. Yeah, just gonna have to shove the cables in. It's <laughs> pretty much without pinching anything. <clears throat> Careful, you're pinching it up here. I'll manipulate that because I can't do these at that same time. Oh, gee, wait. Uh, where's that going? Do I have? Okay. Okay. Wait. Good now? Um, I'm going to have to nudge it out of the way as it goes out. <laughs> Or you can do that. Okay. Yep. Why did I have it six straight up into the LCD screen? Mm, that's a good question. That's the dumbest thing ever. Is that really the way it's supposed to go? Yeah. Can't get my hand to go behind it. Push it in. Yeah. Push it. Far, push it farther. This is close enough. Just keep it together. Okay. Does anybody want?
four more screws and we got all the sides on. Not machined very well. I never want to take this apart. <laughs> Are you sure though? I'm sure of that. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'll let you finish putting these off. These are harder to tighten in. This one does it. <clears throat> All right, bottoms on. Done. Okay. This part with this metal comes out. Then we got to get that film. And the film is in the instruction book. Paper that hopefully I didn't lose. Bag of film. If you're only going to use one of these, they give you a three, I think. So you got to save the others. Just tighten everything on this side. Yeah. Curlies. Circular one, each corner. It's going upside down. I don't know how they expected you to do that. So the film, the film you want is actually on the inside. Circles on it. You have to pick those up. Um, yes, just a no poke them out with the end of a thing, thing, my dear. Poke them out with whatever, it doesn't really matter. Poke them out with the screws and the screws go on it. I just gotta put all the screws in. But there are some. The holes ended up being on the paper. And I think the paper needs to be clean. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know. <clears throat> Have any Q-tips? Uh, yeah, maybe some up in these drawers over here. This 
part stinks. on here. Start tightening the torques follow the indicated direction. So we're in a circle. Screw them only halfway in. Put the torques. The last drawer I look at. <laughs> what is this film here for? Mm, I don't know. It holds the resin. It allows the resin to come through, or the light to come through. It's the bottom of the. So the resin's in contact with that still? Yeah. Oh. Okay. The bottom of the resin holder needs to be clear. Reseat the parts if needed and tighten screws, but this time just near the surface. Got one. There's one there, yeah. there's one there. Are they on the other side? No, of? they're on the top. I just don't want to move. Good idea. Mm -hmm. There. There. Metal had like shavings or something. Okay. Both it. Turn the tank upside down to its normal position. Fill it with tap wire to the max level. Wash the tank and ensure no water is leaking. Oh. You get a bottle of water. So we'll fill it up and see if it leaks. From the fridge? Yeah. Okay to put water in it, not resin. It's literally what it just says. Oh, yeah. Pro tip turn the tank upside down to the normal position. Fill it with tap water to its max level. This is not tap water. No, whatever. <laughs> and it's cold. That's tap water. It's not cold. I've been drinking out of it. That might taint it a little bit more than a filtered water. Thank you, insist. Well, we broke three hours. Yeah, three hours to assemble <laughs> this. <is> insane. <laughs> well, it's insane until you, you know, break down, what was it, $500 over three hours? Yeah. Probably still. Sure. This film is impressive. It's getting stretched with me screwing this thing down.
Okay, final tightening. Careful you don't poke a hole through it. How many of these they assemble a day? <laughs> Someone has to do it by hand. Somebody sure. is really good at this and yeah. can probably do it in like 40 minutes. Really good. <clears throat> All right, just two more. <laughs> okay. We're good. All right, fill this up. The ever important cardboard. There is a min and a max fill line over here. It's 100%, 70%, 35%. So we're going to fill it up to max, is what it says, and hope that all the water stays in. And if it does, Oh, we're tight enough. <clears throat> well, no water's coming out, so that is positive. That's good. It's really weird that it's so thin. I would have guessed it would be like a sheet of acrylic or something. Yeah. It's like an eighth of an inch thick. We're good. <clears throat> okay. You can dump that outside. Take any knife with a sharp tip, not included in the package. <laughs> Carefully punch two holes in the FEP film as indicated in the picture. Punch each hole in two directions to create a cross. I don't know what that's for, but... Right. Okay, final step. Catch this thing. Let me see your knife. Where are you doing? Oh. Cut that way and I cut that way. I'm doing whatever it's in. Okay. I don't know why. Oh, because the screws are going to go through there. Okay. All right, let's blow this off to dry it out. Well, if you've got paper towel, you might use that. It'll leave paper towel in. Okay. All right, next step is to remove this LCD screen. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's 4K quality in there. And then this is on top. The screen. And then these go through. Whoa. And that's why we cut the holes in the film. <laughs> All 
I did not realize there would be. So now we're locked on. It's an LCD buried underneath. Yeah, it's an LCD screen, and that's what comes through. Each time it does something, it it actually shows an LCD. Okay. All right, now we put on these hinges, and then the plastic cover, and then we're finished. It's crazy. So we have these, we have these, and we have no malab leftover parts except for the one part that it said could have. Acrylic <clears throat> lid. Okay, so these go on. Oh, we only use the top two. That's why it looked weird. There's three holes per thing. We only use the top two. Once again, is it supposed to slide them down? I'm gonna, if you lay it back like this, it'll stop it from. Is that where it goes? That's resting position. Yeah. Alright, get the acrylic lid. You just slide the lid all the way in. This way. This way. Do so I gotta loosen those? That. <clears throat> Well, they didn't give us a flathead. Did not. Can't believe the nerve. You want to take a smaller flathead? Is that working? Huh? Is that good? That is good. Hey, oh, look. yeah. It's finished! Woo! Oh, there you are! That's <laughs> okay. Hours and nine minutes to assemble. Glorious. Here, do that again. I'll take your picture. All right, picture time. Excellent. We're assembled. I think we're good there. <coughs> All right. Returning to the print, print platform. Slide the print platform black, black back in. <laughs> black in. It's just so excited. I'm so excited. I'm tired. <laughs> Can't help myself. Took forever. Tighten it up. Final tightening will be done the calibration process. Eat all the rest of the gummy bears. Done. All of them. And it's done. That's tight. Nah. Nah. All right. From now on, we're going to follow the instructions on the touch screen. So we need the power cord. Wow, ah, we're going to print. Can I be any more happy? I'm going to move it up here 
so you can see it. And when we assemble the other thing, we'll keep going. All right. Check out the touch screen. Oh, I should close the lid first. Make sure. Yes, we have touch screen. Wonder. It is working. Updating motion controller firmware. 1.2.3 is the firmware that we're on. It shows in the bottom. Erasing EP, EEP ROM. All right, we can swipe for a picture. And the touchscreen is really responsive. It's probably better than Brian's iPhone. <laughs> we peeled off the orange. We'll hit OK. Everything is ready for a self-test. This is the setup wizard. It's tilting the hump uh -huh. of it. It's really cool. It's moving it up and down up there. Testing it. It's finding home for the tower. So you can see our, our print ability is going to be somewhere like that tall. Make sure the air fan, air veins, vents. I think they spelled it wrong, V-E-N-S. Vens. Are cleaned out and not covered up. We're good. Mm -hmm. Just checking the fans. No, no. That's going. Can't tell on the back. We have a USB port on the front here. Okay, it says please unscrew the resin tank. So we'll open it up. We'll unscrew the resin tank. Take that off. Loosen the black knob and remove the platform. Hold that tank for me. Hold that. Don't touch the platform itself. Okay. Close the orange lid. UV LED check. So the LED screen down there is going to turn on, hopefully. <coughs> Although I'm not seeing Do we see it? Anything? Or is it like I don't really know. UV LED warm up check. It takes 113 seconds to do that. <coughs> so we'll see if my wiring was yeah. correct or not. No. Thank you to the eleven of you that are still watching. It's incredible. Yeah. Three hours, three hours in. There is one step you're missing while it's getting there. <laughs> first things first. First things first here. Let's get this right. Nice. Gotta get your stamp on it. It's 47 seconds, and I am still seeing absolutely nothing in the screen. So it may not be visible UV. I have no idea. We I thought we you not would see something video. in that LED. I mean, some of it's visible, some of it's not, depending on how strong it is. I suppose. 
Or maybe it's just got to warm up first. Before you, <clears throat> you know, is that a countdown to actual firing? It is a countdown. We got 24 seconds left on this clock for the warming up. <clears throat> 10 seconds left. I still am not seeing anything in the LCD screen inside. Can you see a company logo? Yes, can? I can. Yes, I can see the company logo inside. All right. I'll post these pictures on my Instagram and Facebook. So you can see like, there is some reflection, but yeah. yeah, you can see the company logo for sure. <coughs> Yes. Do not open the cover in this. Mm. Yes, I see the secure the resin tank with the resin screws. All right, we're putting the resin tank back in. Be very careful not to destroy the LCD screen. Sure the tank is empty and clean. Not sure how you clean it. Close the orange lid. And it's got pictures for everything on the screen, which is crazy. Now it's checking the tower access. Oh yeah. That was perfect. It is really quiet. That is crazy quiet. Insert the platform at a 60 degree angle. So it's showing like that. Really know what my 60 degree is here. Come on, figure out the 60 degrees. <laughs> <clears throat> platform must hit the edges of the tank on its way down mm. okay so you just want to overhang yeah. here and here so I'll turn it a little bit more close the orange lid it knows it's closed because it's got that little lip up here alright now it's going to do a resin sensor check do not touch the printer Did it touch that? I don't think it did. <coughs> it came awfully close. Do you want to set up a time zone? Yeah. We are in, wow, you can choose all over the world. America. We're in Central, which is Chicago. Can I hear the music? Yes. That's some fresh beats right there. Yeah, got some good European tech now. Self-test okay. Continue calibration. Yes. Printer is homing now. The platform is not yet inserted. Insert it according to this picture at angle zero. Secure it with the black knob. Okay. Loosen the small screw on the cantilever. I need the uh, one that fits here. Big one? Yeah. Some SL1 have printers have two. See the book. We only have one. Unscrew the tank. Rotate it by 90 degrees. Place it flat across the tilt bed. Oh. Not that. The tank. tank. thing in there. Take 
the screws to the side, take this out. We do it across 90 degrees like that. So it lays flat. Move the tilt up and down until the tilt frame is in direct contact with the resin tank. The tilt frame and tank have to be aligned in a perfect line. There's a picture right here. And then how do you move it? I don't know. And the next step. Okay, so we're moving the LCD screen. Oh, I move it here, up and down like this. There you go. Yep. That's closing it. Looks good on this side. I could go up. That looks too far on this side. It's there. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make sure. Sure, the platform, tank, and tilt are perfectly clean. I mean, it's clean. We haven't used it, so. You want to get the water off or not? Is there any water in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'll guess. Doesn't tell you what you can clean it off with. Yeah. That's what I wish I knew. But we're pretty clean. Return the tank to the original position and secure it with tank screws. Has anyone chatted on the chat? I don't know if they have. Just a blue knife. And another three hours and nine minutes for printing. Yes. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> okay, that's tight. Check whether the platform is properly secured. It is. Please close the orange lid. It never told us to tighten that bolt up here. That. Okay, now it's performing a calibration. It's actually going to put that thing into the thing. To the minimum level. Oh, oh, it went way down and touched it. We want to adjust the platform so it's straight. Like that. Tighten the small screw on the cantilever with the Allen key. This one's too big. Okay, that's why I wouldn't tighten this. Some SL1 printers may have two screws. That's why we didn't tighten it earlier, so yep. we can get it perfectly 90. Or as perfect as my eyes show. Okay. Measuring tilt times. It did not say to close the lid, so. <laughs> Slow move. All done, happy printing. Tilt time Ooh. fast is 5.3 seconds. Tilt time slow is 8.0. Area fill is 45. I don't know what any of that means, but okay. Okay, 
We're at the home screen. We have print control settings off. I'm going to go into settings first. I'm going to go to network. I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi out here. Um, so we can make sure we have the most recent firmware on here. <coughs> so it is connecting. It's really nice. It gives you the Wi-Fi and the uh, connection failed. I don't know why. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. Just needed to do that twice. All right, so we're connected to the Wi-Fi. We have recalibration. We have advanced settings. Let's check that out. We can move the platform, move resin tanks, time, host name. This is called the Prusa 64 SL1. <coughs> uh, let's go to update firmware. And it's going to downward. Oh, there is no firmware. 1.2.3 is the most updated one. There are a lot of settings here. So many that I don't know what they do. <laughs> we have support. It actually has videos, system info about us. You can look at absolutely everything. This is a Gen 3, apparently. Oh, tank reset. I accidentally touched the button twice. <laughs> <laughs> you can home it, home tank, disable steppers, print. Uh, apparently on board, we have three examples. So there's memory on board. I didn't even use that memory card. So we have a tower, a calibration test, and a clay army. And one is 3.27 megabytes, and the other are 19.92 and 21.3. So those are going to take much longer. So we can do the small one. So if I click on that, it gives us how many layers, the estimated print time, <clears throat> exposure. Print time is 2 hours and 44 minutes. Clay Army is an hour. Oh, the bigger one is actually an hour and 3 minutes, Clay Army. Well, it's a calibration test. Yeah. It's probably going to take its time. So we'll do the clay army. That's the shorter one, but we're going to click print. But uh, before that, <coughs> we need to fill up the resin. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so you should probably read about that. Get the orange gloves on. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Carbo time, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> OK, that's it for the handbook. Doesn't tell you how. Awesome. So we're going to do the orange resin. I believe you shake it up a little bit before you put it in there. I have no idea if I'm going to do this right. Well, are you going to read something? or Where am I going to read? I, online. I don't know. Maybe the handbook tells you what. Hey, maybe the handbook. Okay, the handbook kind of does tell you how to do it. Pouring resin in the tank. Place the tank on the tilt platform. Boom, it's on. We now, there's a small groove running along the tilt bed that will help the resin you pour in there. Do not overfill the tank. So you want to fill it to maximum and you'll pour it back in when you're done. Once the tank is secure, pour the resin in it. Notice there's a max level. All right, so literally it's just put on gloves. Did a little video of me putting on these gloves and right. pouring the resin in. <coughs> put on the orange Prusa gloves. They're very tight on my hand. <coughs> and we'll use the orange.
Come on, Drip. Close the lid. And click print. I click print. Please fill the resin tank to at least 50%. Okay, so it would tell you more. You can change the exposure. You want longer exposure or the first layer. I don't know what any of that means, but it would have told me how much resin needed to be in there. I put it on 100%. So we'll click print. And we do not open the orange cover. It's going to measure the resin volume right now. And it just puts itself right in there. And on the front, we have remaining to, uh, the time zone apparently is still in military time, which I don't know what time it is there. <laughs> We're 1537, and it's going to end at 1639. <laughs> so we'll tell you exactly when it's going to end. Tell you the remaining resin, how much is consumed, print time less than a minute, layer one of 274. It's got an hour and 20 minutes. I can swipe over to change exposure time. I can refill in the middle of a print or I can cancel. I can swipe left and I can see the layer that's actually going to happen. This is the first layer it's going to print. It's all these weird circles, which is pretty cool. You can watch it print what it's printing. So. That's it for that. The resin printer is printing. <coughs> it's about two minutes. I'm going to wipe this resin off here and close it back up. Get your phone away from it. And I guess we can get the washer out. The washer should go back together way faster. How do you... Uh, oh. oh, there it is. <clears throat> All right, let's break into the CW1. All these things. Okay, I'm going to have to go yeah. pick up a thing at the place. Put these back in here. Uh, I'm going to use them to clean off the resin, I guess. CW1! So is it counting down? That's crazy, isn't it? Sloshes it around. One percent. <laughs> you have to go. You have to come back in an hour to see the final print. Oh, because it'll be fine. Take it off. Again, laid out the same. Accessories on top. We're just going to pull them all out and make sure that we're... Yeah. In here correctly. <laughs> it's only got two boxes. Huh? That's it. So this one might go together a little faster. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Accessories has very, very little. A user manual, power cord. Some more orange gloves, a power brick, kind of like a laptop power brick. Wow, big thing, Tom. A spinny thing, and this piece. Not much to that. This may actually just be yeah, it looks put like together. it's mostly intact. Dude, 
it's assembled. Uh, oh, gosh, it's, careful. It is assembled and upside down. <laughs> Deal with that. <clears throat> okay, done. <laughs> we so good on the first one, we finished up the second one. <laughs> this is it. Let's see. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Lots of packing in here. So that spins around down here. And you get two of these cleaning pieces. That is so cool. And a fry basket. Yes, you can. It's essentially a fryer. Put that down in there. Like so. And this slides in like that. All right. And this thing. What does this thing do? Oh, okay. So this thing goes down on the bottom. And that's a little magnet. There's a little ball in the oh, bottom. It's magnetic. But it doesn't magnet to aluminum. Okay. So when you put it down on the bottom and you put it in here and you spin this, let me show the camera. They can see. Oh. It spins the agitator okay. Okay. down in the inside. Seeing that spin like that? But it's doing it by magnet, it's not actually touching that. So that will create a swirl inside to wash the part. So this little black piece is a button. When you push it in, this piece goes down. So we're going to take the part off of that mounting piece. We're going to plop it in here, and it's going to sit right on top into the <coughs> cleaning solution. And then it's going to spin and agitate and clean everything. So that's how that'll work. And then once you're done, you take the part out and you set it on here and here's the UV lights back here. And you'll cl turn it, close it. We'll turn the UV light on. Let's plug it in and see what the screen says. I don't know if this connects Wi-Fi or whatever. How far through the print does it actually emerge out the surface? I have no idea. I don't think, I think it's printing little mini Prusas and they're about this tall. Okay. So we may never see it actually come out of there. I honestly don't know. That's crazy, this thing is just... <laughs> Much faster. All in one face. Plug I'm, it in. I'm actually really happy it's put together because I didn't want to do three yeah. hours of putting it together. All right, let's plug it in over here. So if you look at the screen here. This is not an LCD screen. This is a screen just like printers would have. Yeah, it's just a uh, display. I mean, it's an LCD, but it's just a display of like start curing. You rotate this button to select stuff. It is not as cool as that screen. That <clears> screen is <throat> amazing. Uh, you got rotation speed, runtime, start curing, settings. The settings has sound settings, information, advanced settings. Advanced settings has run mode, preheat, unit system. And that's it. I did start curing, and it started right away. And you can set run times on it and such things like that. So I'll have to do a little bit more reading about that because I don't really know. Anything about what's going on in here. But that's what that's for. And that's all of that. 
So we're finished. You need to scrape or sand the part. No, this should come out completely smooth. 307 is my guess. <laughs> Does it seem like you were wrong? Good night. So that's it. So now it's basically waiting an hour for it to print. And I think I'm going to end the video here and come back with a really short, normal YouTube video, maybe three minutes of three, five minutes of coming out uh, after it's printed. And then, <coughs> and then uh, you can check that out in my other videos. So we're going to stop it here. There's not going to be much to see within the hour of it printing. And then I'll come back with a normal video you can check out later to show the uh, process of it coming off of here. We wash in it and then um, to the final final print. Sound good? Yeah. So if you followed along for this three hour and 43 minute video, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank Thanks you. as always. Uh, I want to thank all the Patreons out there that watch this and sign up and help support stuff. Helps me get cool stuff like this to show off to you. And hopefully let you know if it's worth buying or not. This is really expensive. So I definitely wanted to know beforehand. So I watched <laughs> a bunch of videos. And uh, there is an Illegal Mars. I put that in the link in the descriptions. That is what everybody on the internet is comparing this thing to. That thing is $240 on Amazon. And it's a, I think it has just slightly bigger build quality, build size than this one. Doesn't have all the bells and whistles though. So I think, I have a feeling one of us in the future might end up getting one of those. <laughs> so I might have that to compare <laughs> later on, um, but it is way cheaper. It's 240 and this was 17. Uh, this is 13 alone and 17 with the kit. Man. So we'll cool. see how that comes out and we'll see you in the next videos. As always, I'm Ben with Myers Woodshop. I'm Brian, Fiery Squirrel Art. He has his own channel if you yeah, want to check yeah. that out. And we'll see you later. See you Happy all. printing. <laughs>